Welcome to Zero Trust Cyber Tips and Tricks. In today's video we will be talking about MITRE ATT and CK tactics and techniques. If you're in the cybersecurity field, you may have heard of this framework, but what exactly is it and how can it be used to improve your organization's security? In this video series, we'll give you an overview of what MITRE ATT and CK is and take a closer look at the tactics and techniques used by attackers. Introduction to MITRE Attack MITRE ATT and CK is a globally accessible knowledge base of adversary tactics and techniques based on real-world observations. The attack knowledge base is used as a foundation for the development of specific threat models and methodologies in the private sector, in government, and in the cybersecurity product and service community. MITRE ATT&CK, short for Adversarial Tactics, Techniques, and Common Knowledge, is a framework that provides a comprehensive understanding of the methods and tactics used by cyber attackers. The framework is organized into a matrix that includes different tactics on the vertical axis, such as initial access, execution, persistence, etc. Part 12. Command and Control. The adversary is trying to communicate with compromised systems to control them. Command and control consists of techniques that adversaries may use to communicate with systems under their control within a victim network. Adversaries commonly attempt to mimic normal, expected traffic to avoid detection. There are many ways an adversary can establish command and control with various levels of stealth depending on the victim's network structure and defenses. There are various techniques that can be used for command and control, some of which includes Application Layer Protocol Adversaries may communicate using application layer protocols to avoid detection, network filtering by blending in with existing traffic. Commands to the remote system, and often the results of those commands, will be embedded within the protocol traffic between the client and server. Web protocols. Adversaries may communicate using application layer protocols associated with web traffic to avoid detection, network filtering by blending in with existing traffic. Commands to the remote system, and often the results of those commands, will be embedded within the protocol traffic between the client and server. File transfer protocols. Adversaries may communicate using application layer protocols associated with transferring files to avoid detection, network filtering by blending in with existing traffic. Commands to the remote system, and often the results of those commands, will be embedded within the protocol traffic between the client and server. DNS. Adversaries may communicate using the domain name system, DNS, application layer protocol to avoid detection, network filtering by blending in with existing traffic. Commands to the remote system, and often the results of those commands, will be embedded within the protocol traffic between the client and server. Communication through removable media. Adversaries can perform command and control between compromised hosts on potentially disconnected networks using removable media to transfer commands from system to system. Both systems would need to be compromised, with the likelihood that an internet-connected system was compromised first and the second through lateral movement by replication through removable media. Commands and files would be relayed from the disconnected system to the internet-connected system to which the adversary has direct access. Data encoding. Adversaries may encode data to make the content of command and control traffic more difficult to detect. Command and control, C2, information can be encoded using a standard data encoding system. Use of data encoding may adhere to existing protocol specifications and includes use of ASCII, Unicode, Base64, MIME, or other binary to text and character encoding systems. Some data encoding systems may also result in data compression, such as GZIP. Data obfuscation. Adversaries may obfuscate command and control traffic to make it more difficult to detect. Command and control, C2, communications are hidden, but not necessarily encrypted, in an attempt to make the content more difficult to discover or decipher and to make the communication less conspicuous and hide commands from being seen. This encompasses many methods, such as adding junk data to protocol traffic, using steganography, or impersonating legitimate protocols. Dynamic resolution. Adversaries may dynamically establish connections to command and control infrastructure to evade common detections and remediations. This may be achieved by using malware that shares a common algorithm with the infrastructure the adversary uses to receive the malware's communications. These calculations can be used to dynamically adjust parameters such as the domain name, IP address, or port number the malware uses for command and control. 
Encrypted channel. Adversaries may employ a known encryption algorithm to conceal command and control traffic rather than relying on any inherent protections provided by a communication protocol. Despite the use of a secure algorithm, these implementations may be vulnerable to reverse engineering if secret keys are encoded and or generated within malware samples, configuration files. Fallback channels. Adversaries may use fallback or alternate communication channels if the primary channel is compromised or inaccessible in order to maintain reliable command and control and to avoid data transfer thresholds. Multi-stage channels. Adversaries may create multiple stages for command and control that are employed under different conditions or for certain functions. Use of multiple stages may obfuscate the command and control channel to make detection more difficult. Remote access software. An adversary may use legitimate desktop support and remote access software, such as Team Viewer, AnyDesk, GoToAssist, LogMain, AMI Admin, etc to establish an interactive command and control channel to target systems within networks. These services are commonly used as legitimate technical support software, and may be allowed by application control within a target environment. Remote access tools like VNC, AMI, and TeamViewer are used frequently when compared with other legitimate software commonly used by adversaries. Web service. Adversaries may use an existing, legitimate external web service as a means for relaying data to, from a compromised system. Popular websites and social media acting as a mechanism for C. The 2nd of May give a significant amount of cover due to the likelihood that hosts within a network are already communicating with them prior to a compromise. Using common services, such as those offered by Google or Twitter, makes it easier for adversaries to hide in expected noise. Web service providers commonly use SSL, TLS encryption, giving adversaries an added level of protection. Mitigating command and control attacks involves implementing a combination of technical and administrative controls. 1. Regularly monitoring and reviewing network traffic to detect and block any communication with known command and control servers. 2. Implementing network-based and endpoint-based threat hunting to detect any stealthy command and control activity. 3. Implementing whitelisting and blacklisting for network connections and applications. 4. Implementing network monitoring and analysis tools to detect any unusual network traffic or activity. 5. Implementing security controls such as firewalls and intrusion detection and prevention systems. These can help to monitor and block unauthorized access attempts. 6. Implementing endpoint protection software. This can help to detect and block malware and other malicious software that could be used for command and control. 7. Regularly patching and updating software and systems. This can help to address known vulnerabilities that could be exploited for command and control. 8. Implementing security configurations management. This can help to enforce security policies across the network and detect any unauthorized changes. 9. Implementing security information and event management. Seam. This can help to monitor, analyze, and respond to security-related data and detect any suspicious activity. 10. Regularly reviewing and monitoring system logs, including those of endpoint security software. This can help to detect any command and control techniques used by attackers. 11. Implementing network segmentation and isolation to limit the spread of an attack. 12. Implementing access controls to limit access to only those users and systems that need it. 13. Implementing user behavior analytics to detect any unusual activity. 14. Implementing network segmentation to limit the spread of an attack. 15. Implementing data loss prevention, DLP, solutions to detect and block data exfiltration attempts. 16. Implementing security awareness and training program for employees. This can help to educate employees about the importance of security and the risks of phishing and social engineering attacks. 17. Having an incident response plan in place and regularly testing it. This can help ensure readiness in case of any attack. It's important to note that preventing command and control is critical to protecting an organization from a successful cyber attack. Organizations should continuously monitor and update their security controls and procedures to address new and emerging threats and detect any command and control attempts.
MITRE ATT and CK framework provides a comprehensive understanding of the techniques and methods used by attackers to command and control and can help organizations to identify potential vulnerabilities and implement countermeasures to prevent command and control. For more information about command and control, go to MITRE website at https colon slash slash attack .org. In the next video we will be talking about MITRE attack, exfiltration. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity tips and tricks.